Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and I did not expect to make this tutorial, at least not for a little bit, because there's a new feature out if you haven't heard of it. It's called the Sculpt uh, Cloth Brush, which lets you sculpt uh, cloth stuff with physics. And this was just something that was being developed and was supposed to drop in an experimental build eventually, but there was so much demand for it that somebody just made a build for it anyways. I'm assuming Pablo, but I don't know. So yeah, Pablo made a new feature, and we're just going to play around with it. And if you want to play around with this right now while it's still not in 2.83 or whatever, there's a link in the description. So uh, let's just, you know, play around with it and I'll show you what I'm even talking about. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a model of a plane and this is what we're going to be using for our cloth. And again, we're sculpting this so we need a bunch of geometry. So edit mode, subdivide, and we're talking a lot. So if this is 10, maybe like 50. And the more we do, the nicer it's going to look because it's going to have more geometry to work with. So I think 60 is fine. We're going to make it shade smooth. Fine. When when you have your model ready, and this works with anything, it can be a sphere, can be any custom model, doesn't matter. You're going to go over to sculpting, and if we scroll down here, you're going to see a new brush that's called uh, None, because it, do it doesn't really have an icon, it just has this None weird icon. But this is the cloth brush everybody's going crazy about, and eventually we'll get an icon once it's properly developed and put in a, uh, you know, a full build and everything. But uh, you can either click this or just drag out this toolbar so we see everything at once, and then click this again. Okay, so now we have our cloth brush selected. I'm going to turn off symmetry, and let's see what happens if we just try to use it. So cloth brush, I'm just going to drag. Now you can kind of tell, if you look closely, that there are some wrinkles, some ripples, but uh, it's not doing that much. So again, what this is doing is it's kind of running a simulation, a physics-based simulation, whenever we make a stroke here. So if we want it to be more powerful, we can either, you know, change the strength, but it's already at one. So the question is, how do we see our cloth more easily? Well, because it's physics based, the mass of the cloth is going to affect what's going to happen. The lighter the cloth, the more it's going to get tugged. Uh, the heavier it is, the less it's going to get tugged. So uh, when we have cloth brush, you're going to see something called cloth mass over here. I'm going to make it lighter, so it was at 1, let's make it 0.5, so half the mass, and now when we drag, you can see it's starting to have a lot more effect. Still not crazy uh, powerful, but it's, it's uh, showing up more, so let's bring it down even more, 0.3. And now you can really start to see, if we make it bigger, there you go. So now you can really start to see this uh, cloth being tugged around. And again, this is physics based. And if you tug it around too much or you make your mass too small, you're going to get some weird uh, intersection stuff unless, you know, you mess with the uh, steps. I don't know if there's simulation steps and everything. Again, this is very new. It came out like 20 minutes ago in real time. Uh, but we can drag this around and it interacts with, you know, previous uh, strokes you made, as you can see. So that looks uh, really, really good, honestly, like compared to using a normal brush and, you know, what would you use? You'd probably use something like a uh, crease or I don't I don't even know. I don't model that much, but you can uh, use different kinds of brushes to try to model your own cloth. And you can even if you know what you're doing, uh, you can imagine that'd be pretty hard. So let's uh, return to this brush and talk about more of the settings. So uh, we already talked about cloth mass, how heavy the cloth is and therefore how easily it is to manipulate. Another thing we can talk about is the damping, which is kind of like the damping of a pendulum, the damping of anything else. So best way to show this is uh, by example. So here is a normal, you know, tug of the cloth. That's what it looks like. We're going to take the damping, which is very small, bring it up to something like 0.5. Do it again. So it's kind of like the same deformation, although I want you to notice what happens on the boundaries. So kind of like the fall off. So this is what we get here. And then if we bring down the damping, bring down the damping, you can see it has much more effect. So the damping's kind of like saying, how much do you want this to wither away as you move away from the center point of the stroke? So small damping means kind of everything gets manipulated. A very large damping means that it's only going to affect exactly where the brush is pretty much in some sense. So you see it's only messing around here, bring this to something near zero or zero, and it's going to mess around a lot more. It's going to have a larger uh, radius of effect with more intensity on further away areas. So that's damping. Let's bring that. Oh yeah, it's at 0.01. Um, next thing is the type of deformation. So physics-based, what kind of physics do we want on this? You can drag. That's what we've been doing. You can push, pinch, uh, another version of pinch perpendicularly, Inflate, grab, these are pretty uh, intuitive, but let me show some of them. So inflate, kind of like blob brush or anything like that, or I guess like the inflate brush, uh, you do it and you see it's actually rising the cloth. So let's make it a bit heavier so it's not as intense. 
maybe 0.6. And you can see we're still getting those nice ripples, meaning it's being simulated, but it's rising, it's inflating. And I haven't tested it out. Does it work with like negative? Yeah, so you hold down control and it does the opposite. So that's cool. The physics will flip over. And it's not like the physics are flipping, but now you're um, deforming inwards instead of outwards. So it works with uh, control. Uh, we also have other kinds. So we've done drag, push, and these are all just kind of like different kinds of effects that uh, you can use. So maybe if you're modeling a... I don't know, a curtain, you use one, you model a cape, you use another, you model just ripples in a pillow, uh, you use something else, and you also mess with the mass and everything. Uh, pinching is going to do what you expect, so this is pinch point, and I'm not going to mess with pinch perpendicular, but uh, pinch point is going to kind of bring the cloth inwards on wherever the center of your brush stroke is. And again, all this stuff depends on your other settings, so high, high mass means barely anything's going to happen, low mass very easy to pinch and you're probably going to get some self intersection and everything and there are more um, options over here so simulation limit factor added relative to the size of the radius to limit the cost simulation effects so that's another way to describe fall off and then simulation fall off is a way to describe fall off you can look into these but i'm just talking about a general uh, setting so have we done all these that matter have we done grab so grab brush is uh, very useful if you want to kind of I mean, this is all sculpting, but if you want to really choose the shape of your cloth, so not just have ripples on whatever shape you already have, but kind of say, I want this here, I want this there, you're, you're grabbing it and pulling it. Kind of like a very, very weak snake hook uh, brush, if you're familiar. Let me show you snake hook. Snake hook, you're, you're pulling it. Um, okay, so that's the basic stuff, but there are many, many more features of this. So let's uh, do another. So... Let's get rid of this plane and do something a bit more interesting. So let's do a UV sphere. And we're going to drop a subsurf modifier to give it more geometry and apply shade smooth. So everything we've done has worked on a plane. Does it work on, you know, stuff that's more 3D, not just uh, two-dimensional? Uh, sculpt mode. And just select your cloth brush. And what do we have this set as? We have this on grab. I'm just going to go back to drag. And let's do a mass of a half just to start off. You can see it's rippling very nicely on the surface of the sphere. So it kind of respects the surface of whatever you're on. And the reason I want to use the sphere is there is another feature that is very, very cool. Could have showed it on the plane, but I want to show it here because that's what the demo was on Twitter. Uh, what you do is you click the mask brush or just toggle over to mask. I'm going to draw a mask over here. And maybe let's make it a bit more complicated. So something like that. So this is a masked area. And we're going to change over to cloth and do some of our simulation. And you're going to notice that uh, nothing actually happens wherever there is a mask. Those uh, vertices, those vertex vertices are pinned. So that's very cool. And it will actually respect that in the simulation. So if we pull stuff down, it's going to kind of gather over here since it can't move. But stuff can kind of pile up on it since it's kind of like a rock, a stationary object. So it respects those uh, pinned, um, those pinned uh, vertices. And you can also pull away and do the opposite. So this is kind of like stretching it out. And you can't, you know, without getting a high amount of deformation that doesn't look natural, you can't pull away too much uh, without it looking weird. But it respects all that. So let me just undo. Whoops. Control Z till we get there. So this works with any arbitrary mask uh, that you make. And let me just do it one more time. Boom, boom, boom. And we can then take our mask and then do the opposite to get rid of it. And you can see that this area where there was a mask is still perfectly spherical, whereas everything else around it is kind of built up. And we've already kind of touched on this um, via all our demonstrations, but... Uh, the fall off, we can control it in a bunch of ways by, you know, affecting the mass so how much, or the damping rather. So what's going to happen in a larger uh, radius of effect and all that. Um, we've demonstrated in a lot of ways that this actually respects uh, boundaries. So we've shown it on the sphere. It's not going to like pull the back of the sphere when we mess, on, uh, mess with it. So let me make that a bit more clear. Maybe grab is the one to use. So we're just manipulating stuff over here, and it has a kind of large radius of effect, but since it's not large enough to reach back here, it's not going to like pull a uh, surface from over there to make up for the surface we need over here. So the radius of effect is, you know, it's uh, limited. So And then you, you might think, oh, of course, but 
it's, it's not necessarily intuitive, especially to program. So that that is very cool. And I'm thinking, is there anything else to go over? I'm just going to go over a couple more of the brushes on the surface of the sphere just to show you again. So we know what grab, drag, and push do pretty much. Uh, inflate, this will look better on a sphere. You can see we're inflating that area, and it's going to pull kind of like you're making a giant tarp. It's going to pull fabric from elsewhere to get that. And then we also have our pinching, pinching at a point, which is going to look very weird since, you know, you can imagine that this is going to cause some intersection issues unless you have more geometry and you do some smoothing after. And then we have pinch perpendicular, which I haven't messed around with too much, but I imagine it's not going to have a large uh, effect on a sphere because, well, I don't really know, to be honest with you. I'm not going to pretend to know. But it seems like a pinch perpendicular and pinch points have very, very different behavior. Maybe somebody who actually uh, knows more about this can tell you. But there you go. That's the very, very basics of cloth. Uh, we talked about all the settings. We talked about masking. And again, if you want this, if you're watching this pretty soon after I release the video, the way to get this build of Blender is you go to the description, you're going to find a link and you're going to install. And then in the future, it's going to actually be part of Blender that you install normally. So hopefully this video was cool, helpful. I don't know. But uh, thank Pablo for all these features and thank me if you want to help support tutorials and demonstrations and whatever uh, by checking out my Patreon. You can think of it as a donation because that's what it is, but you also get benefits. So that is the best way to support uh, these tutorials. So thank you for watching. I've been CG Matter Default Cube. Uh, you've been you. Bye-bye.